chemical analysis, winemaking and aging, sensory perception, health and safety. He's an, an enologist of the Faculty of Pharmacy of Montpellier and doctor of the University of Montpellier I. He was in 1993 and 1994 Associate Director of the University of California at Davis in the Department of Enology and Viticulture. He has served on the International Organization of Vine and Wine, the OIV, since 1996 in the expert groups of wine technology, food safety, consumption, nutrition, and health. And he is now the president of the Commission of Safety and Health. He lectures in enology at the Institute of Vine and Wines in Bordeaux, at Bordeaux University, and also applies his extensive wine knowledge by coordinating the Innovity International Network, which is made up of 65 academic research centers and industrial, par industrial partners, as well as board member of the IVES International Journal, like Inno One. So, Dr. Tesadra, thank you so much for taking the time today uh, on an evening in France to give a, uh, this webinar, give this presentation. Uh, the theme of this presentation is fumaric acid and its uh, use, potential use in enology and its potential functionalities. So, without further ado, I, I pass it on to you now. Thank you very much and thank you. Uh, for inviting me for this webinar, uh, Dr. Botezatsu. So um, it's very nice, of course, to, to have the possibility to um, exchange and to, to show the work that we are doing in Bordeaux. Um, and the first uh, point is that, uh, you know, the, the thematic of the talk, it's concerning fumaric acid um, as new organic acid uh, used in enology with some potential functionalities. And in fact, uh, I am presenting the work, this work, but in, I have a, a PhD student working on the fumaric acid. Uh, her name is Claire Payan. And in fact, she's in, uh, under co-direction between uh, the University of Bordeaux, but also the University of Geisenheim in Germany. And I am uh, director of her PhD uh, with uh, another co-director that is Professor Monica Krishman in Geisenheim. So, uh, to begin, uh, first point is that I would like to, to show you that uh, actually fumaric acid has been uh, approved um, at international level for uh, microbiological action. So, um, it's very important to know that uh, um, this uh, acid uh, possess property concerning the modification of must and wine microbiological stability. And you can see here the resolution of the OIV, that is the uh, OIV HENO 581A 2021, concerning treatment with fumaric acid in wine, especially to inhibit malolactic fermentation. And um, this resolution, in fact, is saying that considering that the control of uh, malolactic fermentation and the inhibition of lactic acid bacteria can help to reduce the uh, level of sulfur dioxide in wine. It has been uh, designed and proposed by the Enology Commission of the OIV, in fact, to add fumaric acid uh, in possible prescription for biological stabilization as an enological practice designed to eliminate undesirable microorganisms or to inhibit uh, the, their development. And so this is the first point and it was, uh, of course, uh, some discussion to um, obtain this treatment with fumaric acid to, to inhibit malolactic fermentation. So the idea is to add, actually, or to authorize fumaric acid uh, addition in wine to inhibit malolactic fermentation. The second point is the objective for this microbiological action. And so uh, you have here the, the, the three objectives, key objectives uh, for the addition. The first one is concerning the control of the growth and the activity of the lactic bacteria, acid bacteria responsible of the malolactic fermentation of wine. Then the reduction of the dose of sulfur dioxide. And then to preserve in, in third part the, the malic uh, acidity. 
Um, so the three objectives are, uh, are of course, of, of interest. And the prescription uh, to obtain this objective are that the doses of uh, fumaric acid should be between 300 and 600 milligrams per liter to control malolactic fermentation. Even in the presence of high quantity of inoculum uh, and during tumultuous fermentation. Fumaric acid uh, must comply, in fact, with the prescription of the International Enological Codex. And, of course, uh, all enological products in general need to uh, fulfill the, the recommendation of the International uh, Enological Codex. Um, in fact, uh, we know that organic acids such as fumarate are commonly uh, used as microbial, antimicrobial in food. And so uh, we have a classical mechanism of intracellular dissociation with release of protons um, that permit, in fact, uh, its efficacy um, against uh, uh, some of the, of the strain. Um, alors, not everything is well defined. Um, there is additional mechanism that maybe we don't know. But the fumarac is based on its low dissociation constant in general. Is, it is expected to have a low antimicrobial activity, which is not the case, suggesting additional antimicrobial effect. You have intracellular uh, GAD system that we call a GADE or other acid resistant system. And the GAD system converts, in fact, the glutamate to gamma amino butyric acid, uh, called GABA, uh, with the removal of a proton, resulting in an increase in the intracellular pH, in fact. So this is a uh, potential action that we can, uh, we can have. Alors you can see here an excellent work that was done by uh, one of our colleagues, Professor Antonio Morata. He is from uh, the um, uh, University uh, Polit uh, Politecnica of Madrid. And um, uh, he has uh, published uh, this paper, you see, in Food Additive and Contaminants. Uh, with the use of fumaric acid to control pH and inhibiting malolactic fermentation in wine uh, with uh, his team. And so, in fact, you can see the level of malic uh, or lactic acid and the viable uh, cell um, in function, in fact, of the time. And uh, it, it looks about it. Alors, LH, of course, is lactic acid, for example, and MH2 is malic acid, in fact. And so what is interesting is that uh, when we look with fumaric acid, with different doses, in fact, it's possible to see how much uh, stay or viable uh, cells uh, with the time. And uh, um, he was looking, for example, the effect at 150 milligram by liter, 300 milligram by liter, or 600 milligram by liter. And, uh, um, the inhibitory effect was really better, as you can see here, with a different figure, um, between 300 and 600 milligram by liter. Some effects are possible at 150 uh, milligram by liter, uh, but it's not fully efficient. Uh, that's the reason that between 300 and 600 milligram by liter are, are needed. And in comparison, for example, if we look at the effect with lactic acid, you need uh, almost four grams by liter to obtain the same effect than what you have with fumaric acid between 300 and 600 milligrams by liter. And you can see here, for example, the effect of lactic acid at two grams by liter, and you can see here at four grams by liter. So really, there is a, a lot of difference. You have here also uh, the effect with uh, sulfur dioxide in comparison. Of course, and you can see that fumaric acid is really uh, well correlated with uh, metabisulfite uh, of potassium uh, between 50 or 200 milligrams by liter uh, globally. Now, this is the fir first uh, uh, point, and so this uh, this publication was very important for the adoption, the first adoption um, of uh, the, the use, in fact, of fumaric acid to control, in fact, uh, malolactic fermentation. The second point is that, in fact, the effect is really effective with a high level 
in fact of um, of cell you can see for example here also in the in the paper the viable cells of nococuceni with malic acid concentration during malolactic fermentation in um, absence or presence of fumaric acid uh, it was added at 500 milligram by liter uh, and so uh, even with uh, at least 10 uh, uh, power 8 uh, of uh, viable cell uh, by milliliter, uh, you have um, stop. You are stopping, in fact, the malolactic fermentation uh, in 48 hours. So it can be really very efficient with a high level, in fact, of uh, uh, an ocucuseni uh, cell. Uh, and that's a second uh, very important result uh, that. Uh, uh, was um, very uh, uh, efficient, in fact, uh, for uh, the, the application of fumaric acid uh, use. So finally, concerning the microbiological action of fumaric acid, there is a real, there is several points, in fact, that we, we, we need to understand. So there is a real interest for malic acid preservation. Of course, there is also a decrease of the pH by fumaric acid. We have also a pH preservation without malolactic fermentation. We have also less volatile acidity, generally, uh, when we use this type of, um, of acid to stop the malolactic fermentation. Uh, we obtain stable red wine without malolactic fermentation. There is a better microbiological stability. And you can have also, for example, some interest if you are trying to work for um, to obtain sparkling wine and to control undesired malolactic fermentation during the second alcoholic fermentation in, in bottle. Um, so this was the first point that I wanted to tell you because finally this, this is one of the basis of the work that has been done uh, during this last year. Uh, second work and second point is now the use of fumaric acid more for acidification, in fact, of product. Uh, all of us know that uh, with climate change, we have some very physical uh, chemical changes. Um, in particular, all of us know that uh, the sugar are uh, increasing in terms of concentration, organic acid are decreasing in terms of um, also uh, concentration, the pH is increasing, and so we have some modification of must and wine microbiological stability and chemical uh, balance, equilibrium. And today, acidification um, internationally at the, at the YV, uh, in fact, uh, concern for the must tartaric acid, malic acid, or lactic acids, uh, for example. For the wine, tartaric, malic, lactic, and also citric acids. And uh, fumaric acid is not actually, uh, I'm, I'm just saying actually, not authorized, in fact, by the YV for acidification. It's authorized actually to control malolactic fermentation, but not for the functionality of acidification. And you have here, for example, the uh, chapter, in fact, with the chemicals that it's possible to use for acidification, to increase the titration acidity and the um, uh, actual acidity, decreasing pH by adding uh, organic acid. And you can see that lactic acid, um, S-minus, DL malic acid, and L uh, um, adish tartic and citric acid are only the only acids that can be used uh, for wine, for example. Alors, there is some limit hein, uh, internationally at the YV, and you see that uh, it can go through um, <coughs> 4 grams by liter express as tartic, tartaric acid equivalent. So, of course, um, we know that fumaric acid is already used in your country, uh, in the United States, but also in New Zealand. And uh, we think, we were some of us thinking that it could be also a good candidate for pH adjustment of must and wine uh, because in fact it possesses uh, a high acidifying power and of course the bacteriostatic property. The second point is that the impact of uh, fumaric acid on lactic acid bacteria has been uh, now subject of uh, several papers and uh, but on the other end 
uh, a very little scientific data is available on the chemical and sensory consequences of the acidification of wine uh, and must by fumaric acid. So uh, we have tried to study to increase the knowledge of the addition of this acid in the must and the wine and to evaluate also its impact on the color, on the phenolic compounds, on organoleptic quality of the wine. Um, and so uh, just uh, to, to remember, you want to compare, for example, fumaric acid and tartaric acid. You can see here the principal uh, characteristic. So uh, both of them have two uh, acid function, of course, but fumaric acid has a double bond. You can see here the double bond. Huh? Uh, that is, uh, of course, very important. Uh, the molecular weight, in fact, is different. It's lower, uh, lowest with fumaric acid. You can see that it's 116.1 for fumaric acid and 150.1 gram by mole uh, for tartaric acid. And so, of course, uh, when you, you use uh, fumaric acid in, in terms of equivalent of tartaric acid, you need only 0.77 gram in comparison with one gram, of course, of tartaric acid. And this is probably something interesting. Second point is that uh, uh, tartaric and fumaric acid have, of course, advantage and, um, of course, uh, inconvenient. Alors, for tartaric acid, what is very interesting is that uh, there is a very good acidifying power, uh, very high solubility. It's around 900 grams by liter in red wine at 22 degrees, for example, we did some measurement. Um, for stability, it's, alors, there is possible precipitation asteroid, and uh, uh, there is no impact uh, for uh, micro, in terms of microbiology. And if we look also the price, for example, a uh, product uh, that can be food grade and produced uh, in China, it's around, uh, you can see here, 3,000 to 5,000 uh, US dollar by ton. And in comparison with fumaric acid, acidifying power is very high. It is around 30% uh, less to add than tartaric acid, so less quantity. The solubility is low. That's the trouble, uh, finally, or uh, the, the limitation uh, point here for this uh, acid, because uh, you can go uh, through 9 grams by liter in red wine at 22 degrees maximum. Uh, in terms of stability, it's better. There is no precipitation. Uh, there is, of course, a microbiological impact. So uh, lactic bacteria growth are delayed. There is bacteriostatic properties, and the price is uh, uh, better than the tartaric acid. It's between 1,500 to 3,000 uh, US dollars by ton, for example. So for this reason, fumaric acid can be a possible alternative to other acid due to its high acidifying power, low cost, and finally uh, availability. Alors, in terms of objective, we uh, have been trying to evaluate the impact of fumaric addition on wine quality uh, in comparison with other authorized acids. Uh, we look for solubility, pH modification, color, phenolic compounds. In terms of uh, organoleptic impact, the threshold in model solution and wine. And we did also comparison between acids with triangular tests and profiles. Alors, for the, the material, for example, that we have been using, we have been looking for, with, of course, with uh, water, but also in ethanol, with different percentage of ethanol, 10% until 16% volume in water, like uh, if you want uh, an hydroalcoholic matrix, uh, model solution, uh, including tartaric acid at 4 grams by liter and, uh, with pH 4. Um, the must, for example, must from Cabernet, all on wine with commercial uh, bagging box uh, Cabernet Sauvignon or Sauvignon Blanc and Merlot uh, cultivar uh, globally. So this is what we used. Alors you can see here in the results the solubility 
in water, hydroalcoholic solution must unwind. Um, and so uh, the, the color, in fact, defines the type of acids that we consider. And in fact, you can see, of course, that the solubility is generally very high for tartaric acid, malic acid, and citric acid. Um, uh, can be in water, in must, uh, or the ethanol uh, model solution, or the wine. And in fact, uh, concerning fumaric acid, it is a small plot that you see, and it's between 4.7 gram by liter to almost 15 gram by liter uh, in wine. So in water, 5.3 in must around five. Uh, in model uh, um, hydroalcoholic solution between six and, uh, and uh, seven. And in wine, in fact, uh, you can go from almost nine to 15. And it's what we have observed. Uh, all these um, results concerning solubility, um, in fact, uh, are presented for 25 degrees in water, hydroalcoholic, must and wine. So, of course, uh, in wine, uh, when you preserve the wine or you are aging the wine, so probably you are not at 25 degrees, you are probably uh, under 20 degrees, but yes, we, 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 you need to, to be at the same temperature to do comparison. Uh, so, finally, if we want to compare, uh, in water and must, fumaric acid solubility, in fact, is 150, 230 for lower than other acid solubilities. Uh, if we look finally in 12% and 16% ethanol solution, fumaric acid solubility is 120, 165 fold lower than other acids. And in wine, fumaric acid solubility is 65 to 115 fold lower than other acids. So for this reason, if we want in the future to uh, use fumaric acid uh, for uh, acidification of uh, wine, uh, must, um, we, we should be careful on the doses, of course, that we will use. Now you can see uh, some pH modification when we are adding different concentration of the, all the acids. Uh, and so we, we have been looking at one, two, three, or four gram by liter for the different acid. Huh? So of course the fumaric, but also tartaric, malic, lactic, or citric. Um, and so generally, what is very interesting for us is to see the uh, pH uh, decrease. Uh, generally, we can see that the pH decrease, in fact, is highest, in fact, uh, always with fumaric acid in comparison with all the other acids. Then you have tartaric acid and so malic acid, uh, lactic acid, and citric acid. Um, in the must, uh, the, you, you have also the same modelization, and you can see that uh, finally uh, at, at one gram by liter already, in fact, uh, the, the acidification, acidifying power is uh, stronger with fumaric acid in comparison with all the other acid. Um, you have also, oh, this was Cabernet Sauvignon must, hein, the, the intermediary uh, figure. And so for Semillon must, for example, you maintain also this uh, superiority of fumaric acid. Uh, for a, a wine, if you look, for example, in Cabernet Sauvignon wine with an initial pH at four, so you, you can see the pH decrease with, um, for example, one gram by liter, the decrease is almost of uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 uh, unit. But with four gram by liter, you have uh, at least one uh, unit uh, of decrease concerning the pH. And so fumaric acid in all case for the, for the red wine, in fact, uh, more powerful than all the other acid. And for Sauvignon Blanc wine, at with an, uh, an initial pH at four, you, you can observe also that uh, uh, the same tendency. And uh, if you go from one to uh, four gram by liter, uh, you have also a big decrease. Uh, the decrease can go from uh, 0.4 at one gram by liter in terms of uh, un pH unit. But this decrease uh, goes through 0.9 or one 
uh, for uh, four gram by liter of concentration of fumaric acid. So finally, the pH decrease is more effective with fumaric acid in must and wine. Um, and this is something or result that, that is uh, very interesting. Second point is that um, uh, what is uh, the, the acid addition in gram by liter to expect uh, to lower the pH of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 units. So we have done also some modelization and you can see here the different uh, figure for uh, example for Cabernet Sauvignon must always uh, with compar in comparison with all the other authorized acid, eh, tartaric acid, malic, citric or lactic. Then for Cabernet Sauvignon wine, Sauvignon Blanc wine. Um, and so we have put here a table showing this acid addition to lower pH of uh, 0.1 unit, for example. So you can see the difference is that, uh, uh, for example, in, of course, in function of the matrix, uh, there is uh, some little variation. So for model solution, in fact, you can see that the fumaric acid is at 0.17, tartaric is uh, at 0.25, um, malic 0.29, citric acid 0.34, lactic acid 0.24. So fumaric acid is uh, in fact with uh, low concentration uh, to lower the pH of 0.1 in model solution. So you need 0.29 in fact in a Cabernet Sauvignon must. Um, and so you can see that it's a better result than all the other acids that are almost uh, uh, between uh, 80% more, 100% more. Um, for uh, Semillon must, you obtain uh, approximately the same than for the Cabernet Sauvignon must. For the wine, it is also the same. And you see that uh, you need 0.2 gram by liter of fumaric acid to decrease the pH of 0.1. And you need at least 50% more or almost uh, uh, twice time uh, the, the quantity in function of the other acids that you try. And for Merlot wine, of course, uh, you find also the same thing and also for Sauvignon Blanc wine. So finally, what is uh, of interest is that uh, you have uh, uh, minus 32 to 45 percent less uh, uh, between fumaric and tartaric to add to lower pH of 0.1 unit. And this is something very interesting. It means that to obtain the same acidification uh, power, um, you need less quantity in fumaric acid to obtain the decrease of the pH. And that's very interesting for the enologist. In our work, we have been looking also uh, impact on color, especially, uh, of course, on phenolics. And we did some specific chemical analysis. Uh, we did some uh, analysis uh, from uh, the D0, to D60, where in fact uh, we have been looking for uh, uh, enological and classical analysis, hein, uh, of course, the pH, the alcohol level, uh, volatile acidity, etc. Uh, the color and total phenolic analysis, the CLA parameters, and so some analysis with uh, uh, chromatography uh, liquid high pressure. Um, with molecular anthocyanin, molecular tannins, for example. And so we have been looking, in fact, in Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, and Merlot. Finally, we three replicate it each time, with four times, time zero, one day, 30 day, or 60 day, in fact, the evolution, in fact, of uh, uh, by the, the different type of acidification. So, of course, you have a control without nothing for each of the wine. Then you have um, addition of uh, chlorhydric acid, then fumaric acid, tartaric acid, and malic acid. And so uh, what is interesting is to, to, to look, of course, about the, 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 the results. Uh, in particular, uh, the titrable uh, acidity, for example, of Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet Sauvignon wine, uh, acidified by fumaric acid and tartaric acid are quite uh, similar uh, at equal pH. So you can see here, for example, the control that is around uh, between 6 and 7. Uh, then the fumaric acid that is really very close of tartaric acid at time zero. 
sorry, I am going too fast, excuse me. Um, then you have malic acid, and you have uh, chlorhydric acid. And so, uh, for Cabernet Sauvignon wine, you can see here that there is no really real significance between tartaric acid and uh, fumaric acid uh, globally. So, if we look for statistical analysis, it shows that uh, titratable acidity in Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc wine depends, in fact, on acid addition, but uh, it is not impacted by the time, generally. Uh, it's a data that we don't show, but um, it's what we have uh, uh, seen, in fact, in the, in the experiment. Uh, concerning the color, uh, you have also, of course, uh, a very important issue, uh, and so the uh, color and, and this, in fact, was looked. Uh, then you have also the absorbance at 420 nanometer uh, for Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, if you look uh, for the red wine, in fact, you can observe that there is at least no effect for the addition of fumaric acid, tartaric acid, malic acid, or chlorhydric acid. So finally, the, the index looks the same. Uh, so that's a very interesting, in fact. Um, only the time uh, effect uh, can, can uh, make the difference, but finally there is no difference between the product. So there is, of course, uh, the evolution also with the time. And you can see that, for example, this effect, uh, for example, in Cabernet Sauvignon, you go from 0.8 and you arrive to 1.2 uh, after 30 days or 70 days. Uh, for white wine, there is uh, an effect of the time with, uh, in function of the acid addition, uh, because there is a little interaction of both factor, in fact. And so you can see at time zero that with chlorhydric acid, malic acid, you have already some increase. Uh, in comparison between fumaric and tartaric, so you have uh, at least uh, the same thing. It's not significant. Um, after one day, so there is uh, almost no change for everybody. And then after 30 days or 70 days, so you can see that there is a, a linear scale, in fact, uh, for the, the level of the absorbance in the white wine. Well, it's not spectacular, but it's between something concerning 0.15 in the absorbance until 0.22, approximately, uh, especially with chlorhydric acid. Well, you know that uh, all mineral acids are uh, forbidden normally, but if we look between uh, fumaric, for example, and tartaric, so the, the difference is really very low uh, globally. So uh, we have globally the same behavior of uh, uh, fumaric uh, acid and controlled wine for color parameter. Uh, so generally, this is not uh, uh, a trouble. Alors, concerning the impact of color, we have been looking also what we call the cooler difference. It's what we call the delta E. It's in fact uh, a factor uh, that permit to um, understand if the uh, product can be, uh, can have a distinction with the high, uh, with your highs. And so uh, to obtain uh, this difference, if the difference is visible by your eyes, in this case, this delta E should be three or more. And you have here the results for the Sauvignon Blanc wine, but also for the Cabernet Sauvignon wine. And so uh, you have, of course, the, the, the value at time zero, at the beginning of the operation for the, the white wine. You have the same thing after 70 days, and you can see that, for example, for at 70 days, right, you have uh, the, the, the control with, uh, uh, with um, fumaric or tartaric or malic acid or chlorhydric acid. Well, you can see that after 70 days, no more than 0.3 for the four uh, um, essay. Uh, then after you have, uh, for example, here, tartaric acid, malic acid, uh, uh, and uh, chlorhydric acid, uh, also that is not uh, really a change. 
uh, and then uh, finally all the data we have concerning the delta e finally with sauvignon blanc um, it is uh, well noted in fact that uh, everything is uh, less than three and that of course very interesting so uh, finally after 70 days the difference in color intensity uh, globally uh, they dis disappear you have uh, uh, a slight difference between the acidify wine and the control uh, that can persist uh, for the U. And so um, all the values are also under three for Cabernet Sauvignon and red wine here. So you can see that after 70 days, or of course, uh, if you look at the beginning, uh, you can have uh, some values that are around two. Uh, because there is maybe a, a slight impact uh, on wine cooler just after the addition, but after 70 days, there is a reduction, in fact, and so this difference is faded, especially between the control and uh, the fumaric acid uh, acidify wine. So uh, in this case, you can see here that uh, the, the um, delta E is 0.12, that is very low. Um, and so the addition of fumaric acid did not impact, finally, the color of the red wine at the same pH. And so this is, of course, uh, very interesting. Alors, finally, if you look the quantity of uh, total phenol content, uh, here you have the evolution, uh, uh, for example. So um, we didn't found really no impact of acid addition um, for uh, fumaric uh, in Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc, and especially for uh, the, 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 the total phenol conduct, the, the index of, uh, of phenol. So there is also uh, no impact of acid addition uh, on tannins uh, and molecular anthocyanin in Cabernet Sauvignon wine. There is only some time effect that we we'll find. And so finally, the impact of fumaric acid addition on total phenol content, for example, also in Sauvignon Blanc wine. Uh, okay, we can observe a little evolution, but it's really very slight. And it's dependent, in fact, uh, of the time. Uh, you have here results showing, for example, this uh, chemical impact of fumaric acid uh, uh, compounds uh, on, on wine. So uh, you have, of course, effect for Sauvignon Blanc wine uh, at time zero or at time 70 days. And so if you look for uh, the total phenol index, you can see the data, the value. Uh, so globally, it's at 7.5 for the control. At time zero, 10 for fumaric acid, 7.5 for tartaric, 7.3. Uh, but after 70 days, you can see that uh, the control is 6.6, .6, and almost everybody is between uh, 6.8 or uh, 8. So it's uh, quite uh, close, finally. Um, if we look for tannins, total tannins, so uh, globally, of course, in the white wine, we know, we know that they are very low. And so there is no real effect. Um, we were looking also for monomer and dimer, uh, flavanthriol, and so the, 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 the sum of the monomer or the sum of the dimer are not modified uh, with a difference, a significant difference. Uh, if we look for uh, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, wine, here you have the data, especially for uh, anthocyanin. There is also, if we look, the, the, the different type of anthocyanin. You know that there is, of course, the classical glycoside anthocyanins, and they are not uh, changing uh, uh, a lot, in fact. Um, so uh, for the time zero, but also at the time uh, 70, so there is some change, uh, of course, in the level, but uh, it's, there is no significant uh, difference between the different type of um, acids that have been added. Uh, if we look for total acetyl uh, glycoside anthocyanins, so it is the same, and for total kumaroil uh, glycoside anthocyanin, it is also the same. So there is no real effect, just a time normal difference uh, with anthocyanin uh, because of the aging. And then you have here, the, uh, for Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, the level uh, concerning the anthocyanins, in fact, uh, also uh, after uh, time zero and time 70 
Uh, so uh, there is no no real change also uh, for uh, the case of fumaric acid addition, tartaric acid addition, malic acid addition, or chlorhydric acid addition. So in fact, if you uh, are interested to, to, to see what can give the, the data, you should just look uh, on our publication uh, that was uh, made in 2022 uh, in NO1. Uh, that is in open access. And so we can now talk, uh, I believe, of uh, organolemptic uh, impact, uh, especially because uh, the uh, sensory perception uh, concerning the acid is also something that uh, is not so uh, much worked. Um, and so we were thinking to look uh, acid detection threshold, in fact, in water, uh, in uh, hydroalcoholic um, solution at 12% volume, in wine um, of Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, or Merlot, uh, Red Merlot. Uh, we did some triangle test and sensory profile. And finally, alors, if we want to, to be synthetic, for triangle test, uh, it was highlight possible differences between fumaric acids and other acid in water, 12% uh, hydroalcoholic solution and wine. Uh, and in terms of sensory profile, what um, uh, appears is that the descriptor that can be sour, bitter, astringent, freshness, or citrus in wine can be also uh, found, in fact. Alors, what about the gustative threshold in or an organoleptic impact of fumaric acid addition on wine, uh, if we do comparison with uh, other organic acid. So we have been looking for what we call the BET. It's what we call the best estimated threshold. And so in fact, um, you have here in the table the different acid that were tested, citric acid, malic acid, lactic acid, tartaric acid, and fumaric acid. And you have in function of the matrix, the, the B, uh, BET. Now you can see that fumaric acid in water, for example, has a BUT that is 35, but it's uh, almost twice uh, for citric acid, malic acid, or lactic acid. And uh, um, it is uh, highest also for tartaric acid, around the 42. And uh, this is approximately, if we, uh, if we look correctly, around 20% more for tartaric acid. Uh, if we look in ethanol, so you can see that uh, this um, uh, significance that we have and this uh, differences in the BET are uh, approximately the same. So fumaric acid in this case is 78 in terms of BET, um, but uh, tartaric acid is uh, highest, 115 almost. Uh, 188 for lactic acid, uh, malic acid 117, citric acid 140. So fumaric acid has a BET that is lowest than all the other acid in hydroalcoholic solution at 12% volume. And so in wine, if we look in red wine, for example, in Cabernet Sauvignon wine, so uh, we found a BET that is a 977, you can see that with tartaric acid here it's 777 and with malic acid 555. Um, and so we have then citric acid around 1051 and then the last one is lactic acid with 1406. Um, and in the case of white wine, Sauvignon Blanc, you have a BUT that is uh, 1275. Uh, and uh, almost uh, 1,050 or around this level uh, for malic acid, lactic acid, and tartaric acid. And for citric acid, uh, highest BOT in uh, Sauvignon Blanc, you see, uh, with 1,656. So concerning all this detection, finally, uh, uh, what is important is to understand that in water and 12% ethanol solution, Fumaric acid has the lowest threshold. In Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc, 
uh, wine. So fumaric acid has intermediary threshold. So the, the matrix effect is, of course, very important. And the fact that in the wine you have probably some other compounds, there is also, of course, polysaccharide, aroma, uh, uh, minerals, uh, uh, amino acids or uh, nitrogen compounds and, and other um, are probably uh, impact this BOT uh, uh, level. So finally, concerning the acid detection threshold, uh, the order of detection threshold of acids in white wine and red wine were different. Uh, so for white wine, it was um, in the urn, malic acid equivalent to tartaric acid to lactic acid, and this is uh, inferior to uh, fumaric acid and citric acid. For red wine, it was malic acid, and then uh, tartaric acid is um, superior, and then fumaric acid, that is at the same level as citric acid, and then the lactic acid. So the detection threshold of malic acid, in fact, was twice as high in white wine as in red wine, and this is probably due to the intrinsic presence of malic acid in white wine, which has not undergone malolactic fermentation, in contrast probably also to the red wine. And this is also something that we need to, to consider. So finally, if you want to, 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 to keep in mind uh, some data, so detection threshold of fumaric acid in water and 12% solution, if we do comparison, so you have, for example, the BOT, with a factor two eh, uh, between water and the 12% uh, volume alcoholic solution, eh, as you can see, uh, 35 for 78. So um, uh, there is really difference in function of the matrix that you put the, 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 the acid in. Alors, in terms of triangle test and sensory profile, so we uh, highlight possible difference between fumaric acid and other acid in water but also in the 12% hydroalcoholic solution and wine. So there is really a, a possibility to, 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 to have differences eh? um, in function of this, uh, the, the type of matrix and the type of wine. And so the, the, for the descriptor, you can find in function of the pH and the concentration, probably the description, sour, bitter, astringent, freshness, citrus in wine, and, and this is under the dependence also of the acid concentration. Alors, finally, we did, uh, for example, here in the triangle test for Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so uh, we have been looking uh, in comparison, uh, the, you have the control and the fumaric acid and then the different type of, uh, of um, addition of, uh, of acids. And so you can see the number of correct uh, answer in function of the number of judge. So you can see that fumaric acid, for example, we have a significant uh, difference that is uh, uh, excellent uh, between 33 uh, on 48 church uh, for Cabernet Sauvignon. On Sauvignon Blanc is 21 on 47. So it's probably more difficult because you have some uh, malic or lactic acid. Um, then for tartaric acid, uh, 14 on 24. For Sauvignon Blanc 13 on 24, so you, you can see that it's uh, quite uh, the same in function of the type of wine. Uh, malic acid uh, also, 15 20, uh, on 24, 14 on 24. So citric acid 13 on 24, 17 on 24. So be better difference uh, for Sauvignon Blanc. Lactic acid also uh, close, uh, 14 to 24, 15 to 24. And Alors, this was uh, the difference with the control, but if we look in comparison fumaric acid and the other uh, acids um, in the triangle test, so you have, for example, with tartaric acid, 9 on 24, 8 on 23 uh, for Sauvignon Blanc, with malic acid, 13 on 24, uh, so you have uh, one uh, little significant difference here, uh, but for Sauvignon Blanc, it is the same than the the first one with tartaric acid. Citric acid, 11 on 24, and 13 on 23 for Sauvignon Blanc. And for lactic acid, 13 on 24 for the red wine, and 12 uh, on 23 
for the Sauvignon Blanc. And here you have also uh, a, sing, a small significant difference. So, finally, all wine with added acid were perceived different from the control wine. This is the first point. Except, finally, fumaric acid in Sauvignon Blanc wine. Uh, that uh, what we have on the table here. And uh, for Cabernet Sauvignon wine, with fumaric acid, tartaric acid, and citric acid, uh, they were not per se different. And we have the same result for Sauvignon Blanc wine, with fumaric acid, tartaric acid, and malic acid. So finally, uh, the organoleptic impact is not so easy to, uh, to find. Huh? Uh, and of course, it depends probably of the matrix, but also of the concentration uh, of the fumaric acid that you are adding. Alors, concerning organoleptic impact on wine, I just want to remember you that in function of the type of acid that you are using, and Pascal Ribeiro Gaillon and, um, and Peno were, uh, have been describing uh, since already 1961 that tartaric acid as being hard, malic acid as being green, citric acid as being fresh, lactic acid as being sourish but not tart. Uh, and so the point is that uh, uh, sureness is not the only aspect to take into account. Uh, globally, uh, if you think about mouthfeel, when you try to differentiate acids, because they can also be perceived uh, as being bitter, um, and it was of course some work done already, in 1992, you can see Rubico and McDaniel, but also sometimes salty uh, with Artwig and McDaniel in 1995, and it can produce what we call somatosensory sensation, like astringency. Uh, so work of Rubico uh, and McDaniel and also Artwig and McDaniel. So you can see that in function of the type of acid we have, there is real differences finally in the quality Huh, of the organoleptic perception that we can have. And so in the wine, we have to consider one point. We have not only one acid. We have a blend of acid. And so this blend of acid is finally the, the blend of these dif distinguished qualities, um, uh, organoleptic qualities. Uh, and then this is a very important issue there. Or you can see there in the organoleptic impact on the wine, uh, finally, uh, the, the, the work eh, concerning the, the, the profile for the wine. So uh, we did it, of course, eh, for both uh, type of wine, Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, and Merlot. So uh, you can see here the, the spider. Eh? And globally, there is no real changes uh, uh, on, the, on the profile. So Cabernet Sauvignon wine with fumaric acid, tartaric acid, or citric acid were not really perceived different. Uh, we have the same result for Sauvignon Blanc wine with fumaric acid, tartaric acid, and malic acid. And you can see that uh, some of the descriptors have freshness, citrus, bitterness, that is really uh, not so high, sourness, um, that is changing maybe a little uh, in function of the type of, uh, of acid and the astringency that is very low. And so, but globally, all gustative profiles were similar. So if we want to try to, to, to have some conclusion, um, finally, we, we should uh, uh, keep in mind that fumaric acid there is a, has a, a low solubility in comparison to other acid. It is more effective than other acid in pH diminution. Uh, the use of more than 30% less than tartaric acid to uh, decrease of uh, 0.1 pH unit, the, the, the matrix or the wine. Um, it has an highest acidifying power and slightly affect wine chemistry and organoleptic qualities. The detection uh, threshold in water is similar to tartaric acid. The fumaric acid seems to be also a good candidate for an economic alternative to wine acidification. And of course, we will need some more study huh, uh, to see uh, the appropriate step to add this acid during also the winemaking. Because of course, if we had on the must or if we are adding in the wine, we are not at the, uh, at the same uh, step 
uh, in terms of uh, evolution of the product and, and the life, the biological life of the product. So if you want to have uh, more information and a uh, lot of details, um, I can uh, encourage you to, to go to the site of uh, Eno1, where you will find the paper. It is in open access, so you can uh, download the paper. Um, and so the, the paper, in fact, uh, uh, his name is Solubility Acidifying Power and Sensory Property of Fumaric Acid in Water in Alcoholic Solution, Must and Wine, compared to tartaric, malic, lactic, and citric acid. Uh, so you, you can see here the abstract, uh, the authors, uh, there is, of course, a table, figure, references. And uh, um, I thank you for your, uh, for your attention uh, concerning this uh, presentation. Thank you so much, Dr. Tessandra, for this presentation. It was very, very interesting. Um, I am very excited about all this. As I mentioned in my emails before having the webinar, I've uh, become interested in fumaric acid last year. Um, and for us in Texas, I think, because we have wines with high pH, um, malolactic fermentation can be problematic. Uh, it can lead to all kind of faults in, uh, in wines. We see quite a bit of mousiness, we can see some ropiness, we see some phenol development, um, all kinds of um, issues, volatile acidity, a lot of that. So this acid, to me, it seems like it has a lot of potential um, for its acidifying power because we, uh, we need to acidify our uh, wines here in Texas as well as uh, the capacity to inhibit malolactic fermentation. So uh, again, thank you so much for, for doing this presentation. I, I think it's very, very helpful and very informative. Um, so now I'm opening this up to questions from the public. Um, we have one, when is the best time to add fumarium unification? Does it matter from an organoleptic perspective? And where is fumaric acid naturally found in nature, fruits or vegetables? I know, uh, it's a, an excellent question. Uh, in fact, uh, if you want to stabilize the product and to acidify the product, there is, of course, several ways. Uh, you can add it on the transform uh, product, the wine, or at the must level. The point is, of course, if you add it at the must level, uh, in fact, the fumaric acid will be used um, in the Krebs cycle. And so, uh, in this case, with uh, fumaric acid, you obtain malic acid. And so, it's also possible, in fact, using probably fumaric acid to increase acidity of the, of the, of the must and during the alcoholic fermentation by generating more malic acid. So uh, imagine, for example, like we had this year, it was a very dry year in Europa, I don't know in, uh, in North America, but it's probably the same, I believe. Um, so we lose, uh, when it is very dry, uh, with very high temperature, so we lose a lot of acidity. We have compuration, in fact, of acidity in the, at the berry level. Uh, and so sometimes, almost, uh, uh, no, no malic acid or very low level of malic acid. So it can be also a possibility to, uh, how I can say, to, to, to be more balanced in terms of the different type of acids that you can have in the must. If you had, for example, fumarate during the winemaking uh, in the must, so the yeast transform it in malic acid, and then this malic acid uh, in some case, if you have a white wine, you want to keep it, maybe, to have good acidity. But maybe uh, on a red wine, of course, you want to do uh, the, the uh, malolactic fermentation. There is a decrease, but you have a good level of lactic acid in this case. And you know also that lactic acid is um, round acid. It's an acidity that is more qualitative. You know that, for example, uh, lactic acid, you find it in the yogurt. Uh, and so it's uh, more round, uh, uh, it, it's a better acidity, uh, more pleasant acidity. So the, the question is really very interesting. Actually, we are working, for example, in the, in the YV to see uh, if we can 
do uh, the authorization for acidification of the wine, but under that, there is also some work of some colleagues uh, looking, for example, for acidification at the must level and what is the effect. Alors, we did, for example, uh, some, um, some assay also uh, in, uh, in Bordeaux, and maybe I can show you if uh, I found the slide. Voilà, you have, for example, here, you can see here, in alcoholic fermentation, voilà, uh, that we have been treating with, uh, in fact, fumaric acid addition, uh, and so we have been uh, adding uh, two grams by liter, for example, of fumaric acid. And you can see, in fact, the malic acid uh, level that we have during, uh, finally, alors, uh, alcoholic fermentation doesn't change huh? uh, the, the density uh, in function of the day. Uh, it's really the same profile uh, in function of the assays that you do. But if you add tartaric acid or fumaric acid at vatting or at the end of alcoholic fermentation, you have really differences. You have an increase of malic acid. You can see, for example, here it was 0.25 gram by liter during the, 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 the effect. Uh, and, uh, and so you, you have this increase that you can see. And in fact, the malolactic fermentation was delayed by two, three months uh, when we have uh, two gram by liter of fumaric acid. So, you can generate some malic acid, and so the, because it is more acidic also, in terms of pH, probably, the malolactic fermentation is, of course, uh, a little bit delayed. Uh, so that's also something to, 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 to consider. And so, of course, at the end, you have a highest uh, lactic acid production when the, um, uh, in fact, the, the, the alcoholic fermentation is, uh, it's at the end. And so for 1.2 gram by liter adding a vatting, you have 20% more lactic acid. And for 2 gram by liter adding at the end of alcoholic fermentation, we found, for example, 100% lactic acid at the end uh, increase in the, in the wine. So you, you can see that in terms of fermentation, it's also, well, there is probably a lot of work to do because in function also of the strain, there is maybe yield that are not exactly the same hein, in terms of genesis of uh, malic acid or lactic acid um, from fum fumarate, hein, so from uh, uh, fumaric acid. But it's probably also a way to maybe re-equilibrate, finally, the blend of the different acids in the must. And that's a very interesting uh, uh, possibility. I am too long, maybe. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Thank you. That was a very thorough um, answer, but it, it raised a question for me. Um, it says here, MLF, malolactic fermentation delayed by two, three months when um, added fumaric acid was added uh, post-fermentation. So I guess my question is, does this effect wane with time? Do we lose this protective antimicrobiological effect with time with the addition of fumaric acid? Uh, do we lose it? Uh, no, I, I just think that it's like if we have maybe a, a selection. We need to have some strain uh, that is able, in fact, to do the, the, the fermentation. In fact, not too much sensitive to uh, finally uh, fumaric acid, maybe. I, I guess I'm coming from the other perspective. If I want to inhibit fermentation, I don't want malolactic fermentation at Okay. Okay. If I add uh, if, fumaric acid two grams per liter, let's say at post-alcoholic fermentation, is that enough to keep the wine stable through bottling? Normally, yes. Okay. Normally, yes. Uh, in the work that has been done, uh, at 600 milligram by liter is enough. So some data uh, have been done at one gram by liter or two gram by liter, uh, for example. Uh, and generally, it was really um, uh, very well. Uh, the, the comportment was really uh, very, very good. Eh? So the moment of addition depends on the type of wine that we want to produce. But uh, of course, uh, addition at bottling is probably very interesting. Uh, also, the effect on, on, on white wine, if we want or not, 
the malolactic fermentation. Uh, and maybe also the sparkling. Huh? I don't know. I, I don't know if you are doing sparkling. Some, the, some, uh, not a lot, but yes, some. Yeah. So that's also one of the of the point. But after there is maybe one limitation, and one of the limitation in the discussion that we have there, uh, we should consider the quantity of fumaric acid. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, generally, in some data uh, concerning the sensory perception, if you look, for example, the sensory perception in function of the quantity of fumaric acid that you add, so if you look for one gram by liter, three, four, five, six, seven gram, uh, different quantity. Uh, so at one gram by liter, you have a well, it's well balanced in mouth uh, in general. Uh, at three gram by liter. You, it's fruitier in mouth, but if you go more, uh, it, four gram by liter, it's probably very acidic, and so the acidity maybe become also unpleasant, yeah. uh, can become unpleasant. So there is probably uh, some levels that we should not go more, uh -huh. uh, because probably also it can create uh, uh, some new uh, appreciation of the acidity of the product. So, in my opinion, um, and because of the data we have, I think that if we use around uh, two, two to three or 3.5 gram by litre, it's probably okay, maximum. Well, um, yes, uh, and four grams per litre, to me, it seems like a lot, given its acidifying power and how little it takes to uh, inhibit malolactic fermentation. I, I think that's a bit extreme, so I don't, I don't see going there, you know. But for research purposes, it makes sense to look at that. Um, I think we missed one of the components of the previous question. It was where in nature can we find this type of um, acid? Where in nature? Vegetable? General, uh, yeah, generally in the, some of the fruit, eh, because it's uh, in the Krebs cycle, so you can have some residue. So in fact, uh, globally in the grapes or in the wine, you you have not so much. Eh? It's just uh, maybe 10 milligram, 20, 50 milligram. It's not so much uh, generally, but it's one natural uh, component that you can have in uh, in wine. Eh? It's one of the several acids that you have in wine, finally, or in grapes. So you know that there is a, the 13 famous, uh, the major one, of course, are uh, we know all of us, uh, tartaric, malic, citric, that are really major. Uh, and fumaric is like some other, uh, that are at very low level generally. So, but between, I would say, 10 to 50 milligrams by liter. And, but it should be interesting to do a survey, maybe in function of the varieties, in function of the terroir, uh, to see, in fact, the minimum and maximum we can found. Um, this is something that, that probably should be done also in the future. And um, a follow-up to that question, I guess, was how is fumaric acid metabolized in the human body, <laughs> if you know? <laughs> Alors, I don't have uh, looked the, the metabolization of fumaric acid uh, in the body, but it's a very good question. Well, we know that uh, in terms of safety, uh, it doesn't create uh, trouble as uh, it is used now uh, for a stabilization of some foods uh, until three gram by three gram by kilo, four gram by kilo, generally. Mm -hmm. So normally there is no no trouble in terms of toxicity or uh, or trouble. Mm -hmm. Alors, there is more acidifying power mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. So maybe we hydrolyze better mm -hmm. uh, some of the nutrient uh, that we we take. Huh? That's probably possible. So maybe uh, a better um, digestion. Uh, uh, absorption of some of the compounds. So this is also something that should be studied probably. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and I have one final answer for, uh, question for myself. Um, I was curious about the sensory part where the descriptors were generated, uh, sour, fruity. Uh, what kind of sensory analysis was that? Was it descriptive analysis or flash profiling? Do you remember what? Uh, this is As a Yes, so it depends, but in fact, it depends uh, the concentration, I believe. So, uh, for the quality uh, of the descriptor, uh, it depends, in fact, of the quantity, I think, of the fumaric acid. So, 
If you are between one gram and two gram, it can be from something that is fresh to um, uh, an acidification that is enough uh, uh, qualitative, in fact, that uh, create a good uh -huh. good uh, vibration in, in, uh, in the palate. So, so, so I, I believe really that there is, um, how I can say, uh, a, a level, in function of the level, there is probably one point for each product, in fact, that we should not go more because probably uh, we, we change the perception. So it's also a question of, of uh, concentration, probably, in my opinion. Thank you. I guess where I was going with it was, did you use like a trained panel for the sensory analysis? Did you use a, um, your students or how it was the actual analysis done? How, how you generated those descriptors, if it was... It, it was... Uh, what we call a trained panel. Train panel. So, yeah. yes, we have some trained panels generally, mm -hmm. and so the people are able to uh, uh, to work. And so, uh, of course, you need to have enough people eh, working uh, in the panel because if you have just uh, 10 people, it's not so much. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's better to have 20, 30, well, uh, as much as we can yeah. generally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But normally, uh, they try, for example, the, the tartaric acid in solution before, mm -hmm. uh, malic, lactic, then fumaric. Uh, like that, they have already uh, one uh, one perception in the water. So you begin with the water, and then you increase in terms of uh, complexity of the matrix. Mm -hmm. Then you add alcohol. Mm -hmm. Then you you had uh, uh, you can use the must, and then you can use, for example, the, the wine. wine. Yeah, thank you. We have two more questions. Any impact of fumaric acid against bretanomyces? Ah, this is a good question. Uh, we have been looking, and in fact, we didn't find. It was just one essay, but uh, a first essay, but uh, we didn't see differences in terms of growth in the uh, strains that we used. But it doesn't mean that maybe there is no effect. Uh, maybe also uh, it's also a question of concentration uh, and some um, uh, external condition like temperature like uh, so we need to work more to, 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 to know and to have different type of strain because you know for example that there is some strength of bretonomyces that can uh, be resistant for example to sulfur dioxide mm -hmm. so how they react with fumaric acid, with fumaric acid uh, between 0.5 gram by liter and 4 gram by liter, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we didn't look at 4 gram by liter. We look with uh, well, what we were believing acceptable yeah. level. Yeah, Or so maybe we were not at the maximum also uh, that we can do. So this is something to to mm -hmm. to to. Yeah, so many research projects, potential research projects. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, two more questions. Uh, what happened microbially to the wine when uh, malolactic fermentation was delayed two, three months? Was VA stable? Uh, yes, it was stable. Uh, but you know, this was in fact, uh, it's not, it was not a real winemaking with 100 hectoliter. Mm -hmm. This was in fact um, a, a micro uh, winemaking with just uh, uh, 10, uh, 15 kilo of grapes, you know, so it was a small winemaking uh, that we did. Um, so no, it was, it, it was not, uh, no, no trouble on this, uh, on this point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then there's a comment more than a question. Um, I would love to start using fumaric acid, but have been unable to find it in reasonable quantities. Still searching for a source that will sell in quantity to a small medium winery can use that a small medium winery can use my last contact was with this company whose minimum quantity was one pallet of 40 25 kilogram bags oh my lord <laughs> well um to that question to that comment michael i have been able to find fumaric acid food grade on amazon of all places and um i bought a one kilo bag of it just for research purposes so um i haven't used it yet but i'm going to so just letting you know i don't know how much you need but check out amazon 
food grade. Okay. <laughs> yes. So you you can of course if that if that's a laborate, laboratory scale also with a chemical company you have uh, you can have everything but uh, if you are a winemaker so it it means that if tomorrow we accept the idea to use this acid for acidification uh, we will need production mm -hmm. uh, a, a correct production with an industry concerning uh, fumaric acid and fumarate um, so it can be a new story in comparison with tartaric acid because tartaric acid is expensive uh, and fumaric acid is less expensive and you put less so in terms of economy is probably uh, of interest so that's probably something to develop with some industry uh, who want to produce uh, fumaric well thank you so much Dr. Tessad for this presentation again and for your time. I apologize for the mix up with the times again. Um, thank you. This was very interesting, very helpful. Thank you to all of you who were here today and watched this presentation. Please take two minutes to fill out the survey that will pop up at the end. And um, I wish you all a good day. Dr. Tessad, a good evening to you. And I also thank you very much. Thank Same you. for you. Thank you. To all of you, it was a pleasure. Likewise. Bye-bye.